our next speaker is uh, our very own Asi Masika. Um, she's here under the Fiverr hat, right? Um, and if you read the bio, so you saw that she's a PhD student here, but she submitted her PhD, PhD so soon she'll be uh, uh, Dr. Asi Masika uh, when it's <laughs> approved. Um, and as I said, Asi will speak under her Fiverr hat. Thank you. So, uh, as Oran said, I'm, uh, I, I'm doing my PhD here and uh, under the supervision of uh, Professor Leo Rokach in the area of recommender system. So it's really a great fun for me because uh, I'm doing it five or things which are really similar and related to what I did in my PhD. And uh, three years ago, I uh, stood here and presented uh, a poster uh, for my first uh, PhD research about mobile coupons. So I'm really closing the loop here, and I'm very excited uh, to give this presentation. Um, OK, so uh, I will talk today about uh, how we incorporated some embedding and deep learning into the search algorithm uh, of uh, Fiverr. Uh, before uh, getting into the details of what we do, let me tell you a few words about uh, Fiverr. So what Fiverr is. Actually, Fiverr is a marketplace for uh, freelancers. And by uh, 2020, 40% uh, of the workforce in the US is going to be uh, of freelancers. So we're really changing the world. We already have uh, in Fiverr services for more than 200 uh, subcategories, from logo design to website building and even uh, machine learning services. We have a pro seller here, <laughs> Dora Mir. Uh, and, uh, and we have uh, more than uh, 900,000 uh, uh, gigs which are selling services on Fiverr. So this brings us to the one of the biggest challenges that we have is how to make the perfect match. When buyers are coming to the Fiverr website, how can we match the, the buyer and provide the, the best uh, gigs out of the so many gigs that we have? Uh, to match the, the needs of the of the buyer, let me show you let me show you some examples. So, uh, who is familiar with uh, Rob Janoff? No one. Okay, so this guy he's the the designer of uh, of the Apple Apple logo of uh, Apple company, and uh, and if you like to buy a logo from him, you can do it for ten thousand dollars online from Fiverr. Uh, but if you like a more cheaper uh, logo, a cheaper logo from also uh, very good uh, designers, but not top of the top like uh, Rob Janoff, you can also find it uh, in Fiverr. So uh, when someone is arriving to, to Fiverr and is looking for a logo design, what are really his expectations? Does he expect a world leader a designer uh, to sell him a logo in $10,000? Does he expect someone in uh, hundreds of dollars? Some, does he expect some uh, automatic uh, template uh, logo with uh, tens of dollars? So these are one of some of the challenges that, uh, that we are dealing with. An additional challenge is what we call uh, prototypicality, which is, for example, someone is looking for content writing, which is something, one of the most common services uh, in Fiverr. So you see how uh, out of the 4,000, more than 4,000 services, gigs actually, that we have uh, in, the, in the website, one of, uh, one of the top gigs is one that will uh, do content, French content editing uh, for you, or French content writing for you. So it's really, it's really great. Uh, French content is great, but most of the people, they deal with the uh, content which is not in, uh, in French. And uh, putting such a gig in a, a great position, like the first position, it's a very expensive inventory for us. So it's not, sometimes it can be a great match, but in most cases, it won't be a great match. And in general, although the search problem is uh, some, a problem which is very common to many, many marketplaces, uh, each marketplace has its unique challenges, let's call it. And uh, at Fiverr, our unique challenges is our service, unlike a SKU, for example, in Amazon, where a SKU is, uh, identifies uh, exactly the product. Uh, for Fiverr, the same service can mean different things, and the uh, different services can have the same description. So it's, it's more vague and, uh, and uh, soft in that way. 
So, uh, so our challenge is to make the perfect matches. And as I showed you, just textual query document uh, match is not good enough. We need to apply some more advanced uh, methods, contact methods, and of course, the, the behavioral of the, of the users on the, on the website can give us a lot of uh, information regarding uh, making a better match. OK, so how, how do we try to, do, uh, to improve the match in uh, Fiverr? So this is a high-level uh, uh, description of our uh, search uh, algorithm. The first, uh, we have two phases. The first uh, step is uh, candidation, uh, where we use really textual match of the, of the, uh, the query and the gig, uh, based on uh, BM25 with some uh, adaptation. And then we take the candidates and we reorder them, we rank them, by a learning to rank algorithm, which is based on a gradient boosted trees with a DCG uh, ranking. And for this uh, ranking algorithm, we use uh, four uh, families of features. The first one is query gig textually relevancy, uh, which is based on the BM25, like different outputs of, uh, of, the, of the engine. The second one is a query gig behavioral, like a click through rate or conversion rate. Which, is very, which are very interesting features, and I can give a complete uh, uh, presentation about it, but it's not uh, the topic of this one. Uh, then we have uh, different gig features, like, uh, like the uh, rating, the number of rated orders, and the rating, and, and, and the text, and so on. And the last one, which is uh, actually the focus of this uh, presentation, is the context, which in uh, most cases represent for us the user, and the user intent during uh, this uh, during this session. So uh, and the, and the labeling for the for the learn to rank for this ranking model is the behavioral uh, labels that we got from our buyers. So we have a uh, click, buy, and some adaptation for the quality. So uh, this is also an interesting presentation how we measure the quality of our sellers. But uh, um, to make a long story short, we, we, we have both uh, explicit signals because we send, uh, uh, we send surveys after, uh, each, uh, after each deal to ask the buyer how satisfied this wa he was. And we also measure uh, different uh, implicit signals like uh, responsivity and stuff like that. And based on that, we have some quality scores for every seller. And then we can uh, moderate the, the labeling that we give to the model in order to promote better uh, bet sellers with a higher quality. Not only the one who convert best, but also the one who are uh, doing a, a good quality. So we know the buyers will be satisfied afterwards. OK, so uh, now I will talk about how we generate the context uh, features for the, for the ranking. So uh, what we are doing is uh, we're using uh, entity to vector, uh, not surprising. So uh, it relies on the uh, algorithms, uh, the same algorithms from NLP, the word to vec or uh, glove. But instead of uh, doing embedding for the for the words, we're doing a embedding for the for different uh, entities which we use in the marketplace. And the entity is mapped to a word, and uh, and the sequence of entity actions is mapped to a is mapped to a sentence in the word embedding uh, algorithms. So uh, why are we doing it? We're doing it because this provides us a semantic, a semantic dimensionality reduction of our uh, entities. And I will describe two use cases where we are using it as uh, features to the ranking uh, algorithm. The first one is uh, to the context is the user itself, like the country of the user. And the second one is to, uh, is to create uh, uh, features which, are, which represent the intent of the user, like the session of the user today or the, the previous uh, history that the user has in the, uh, on the website. So uh, let's start with the second use case. So in order to represent the, the session of the users and the preferences of the user, the behavioral preferences, so far in the, in the marketplace, what we are doing is we are doing a gig embedding. So in the training phase, not related to a specific uh, user, what we do is we take the different gigs that the user click on in a session, and we uh, use a word to vec uh, algorithm in order to get an embedding representation 
of the gig. So we take like uh, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of sessions of users and their click, uh, the click journey, uh, click stream journey, and we add enter it to a word to vec algorithm in order to create a gig embedding. And then what we are doing is uh, okay so we map the gig to a word and the sequence to a sentence and then what we do we take the in the in the inference we we take the clicks that the user did so far in the in during the session and now we for every candidate we measure the cost and similarity the distance of the embedded uh, gig representation of uh, of the candidate to the to the other sellers, the other gigs that the user that the user clicked or uh, clicked before this uh, before this session, and we also have some negative uh, similarity features. So if there are uh, uh, gigs which were presented in uh, in uh, high positions and the user ignore, we we also uh, we have a negative feature which measure the, measure the similarity of each candidate to this uh, negative uh, negative gigs. And then we take this type of features. We have, uh, of course, different var variations of, uh, of these features, and we add them as features to the, to the ranking model. So one of the challenges, and I think Gil also mentioned it, when we work with such uh, latent features is to verify if they, make, if they uh, make sense. So we have to justify it to ourselves. We have to justify it to our customers, in our case, the product managers. We have to show them that it makes sense and also for us because we know that entity embedding is a powerful ooh, entity embedding is a, is a powerful tool but uh, but but not always so we developed some different simple but powerful uh, best practices to verify that our embedding really makes sense uh, one of the one of the methods is that every entity usually have uh, different metadata. In our, in our case, when we talk about uh, the gig, it's the subcategory that the gig belongs to. And what, uh, so here you see every color is a different subcategory. And want, what we want to see is that on average, gigs which belong to the same subcategory are closer to each other than gigs which are, different, which are, which are coming from different uh, subcategories. So if, on average, we have uh, this behavior, we know that the, the embedding works quite well. Another, uh, another approach, is, uh, which, is al which we also use in order to tune the embedding, to find the right uh, embedding size, is uh, we take out, we take sessions of uh, uh, user clicks, we take out one of the gigs, and we try to predict uh, the gig based on the context of the other gigs in the session. And we measure it either using a uh, heat rate at K or uh, NDCG at K. And we see what is the embedding size which provides us with, uh, with the best results. So this is another approach. And last but not least is the manual approach. Yes, manual uh, in the end. So uh, we look at uh, what we are doing is uh, we take the embedding. We create a TSNE, so a two dimensions uh, plan out of it. And now uh, we are looking at, uh, at the clusters. So for example, here it looks strange. Uh, blue is the logo design. And uh, it was strange for us why we have uh, two separate clusters. So then when manually we are looking at, uh, at the items, that the gigs that were belong to these uh, clusters, we see that uh, these two, for example, uh, belong to some modern style. And this is uh, some other childish, uh, all different styles. Okay. I have a more three minutes, so I will be on time. Okay, so a manual, uh, a manual test is also very important. Look at, uh, look at uh, the results manually, and we also have a dedicated uh, team uh, which are really evaluating the results of our models uh, manually to, to find some sense in the models. So manual evaluation is uh, very important. Another example that I wanted to show is the country embedding. So here we use a very similar, th we wanted to get a, a representation of, a, of the user country, to add the user country to the feature, as a feature to the ranking algorithm. Again, at uh, Fiverr, we have users from 100, 
hundreds of, uh, of countries. So if we use the one hot vector, it's a very sparse data. And we wanted to cluster the countries, but to do it based on the behavioral of the user in our, uh, in our uh, website. So what we, what we actually did this time, we take the, uh, the gig, the, the users that click a specific gig, and we take the country ID for each user, and then this, the country ID of the user is the word, and the session of all the users that clicked a specific seller in a certain amount of time, this is the sentence. And based on that, we did the embedding, this time for the user country. So uh, here again, when we analyze the result, it's really interesting. The clusters of countries were really uh, countries with a similar culture. Like here, for example, you can see uh, Spanish-talking uh, 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 countries like Spain, Brazil, and so on. So, so it's really nice when it makes sense. It gives us more confidence and also the organization more confidence in these uh, latent, uh, latent models. So uh, last slide. Uh, take uh, key take, uh, take home points. So uh, word to vec is not only for uh, language, not only for NLP. It's very powerful also in search and recommendation algorithms when we do entity embedding. The evaluation is really important with embedding. It's true that it's, uh, true it's uh, latent uh, algorithms, but you need to, uh, to evaluate and to see that, uh, that the vectors that you get in the end really make sense because these are the components that you enter to your algorithm, to, to the model in the end. And if it doesn't make sense, it will not, uh, it will not work, wo work well. And specifically, this, this work works well for uh, context modeling. So thank you very much. So we have time for two quick questions. Yes. Uh, hi, thanks. Uh, word to vec, like assume proximity has meaning like closer words, so you choose, you choose the window of the world to look at. Yeah. Uh, now, is it valid assumption? Because you have a set of uh, gigs the customer clicked on, uh, but you know, if he clicks one, two, or three, does it matter? Or in the beginning of the session, the end of the session, like over, how do you handle the proximity? So, uh, so with the glove, the glove takes a little bit into account, uh, like the, the proximity. The world to work doesn't take it into account. Uh, so it depends. This are depends how accurate you want uh, your data your data to be. Uh, for our models, the the world to work uh, worked quite well and provided a good similarity, or like good based on our evaluation and the the process that we tried to model, it was <coughs> uh, it was good enough. Yeah, over there. One last question. Thank you. I, I want to ask you if uh, this uh, project uh, of uh, Fiverr, uh, this uh, in 100% uh, uh, independent uh, project or this project uh, in uh, collaboration, in cooperation uh, with uh, other uh, uh, networks uh, as uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn? No, it's an independent project. Okay, we're going to thank Asi one more time and everyone, thank you, thank you for coming.